Hello everyone, this is Mike Check 95 along with my cohort. Krieger Margin 1. And And we have finally finished our Alien series with the worst Alien film in the Alien anthology. That can be argued. Alien Resurre- <laughs> Alien Resurrection. I thought you were dead! Yeah, I get that a lot. Statistics and financials, please. I, I think you're reacting to this worse than some of the Resident Evil films so far. Okay, so, financials. I'm excited for this. Tell me. Just, just, just tell me. Well, we'll start with the ratings. The audience puts this at a 3.9. Understandable. The critics put it at a 5.4. <laughs> Are they stupid? Um, they're close. They're close to where I'm at. Um. <laughs> <laughs> you need to reevaluate that rating right now. I, I have several reasons. We'll we'll dip into that, but we're in financial. Can't I? I was traumatized by sex. Um, <laughs> so the budget for this film ended up being at $75 million. It's a pretty, pretty high budget. This film looked like it was made on $20,000. Their box office was $47.7 million. <laughs> so that gets them a net profit of negative $27.3 million. <laughs> Thoughts on <laughs> We have a new record for biggest loss of any movie review review. So I'm just going to get into my review because okay. I have very little thoughts about this movie. Okay. Remember how I said we didn't need Alien 3, but it's also a weird movie that I hate I hate the first half, but slowly enjoy the second half. The special special edition only. This film does the exact opposite. This film, in my mind, basically does the same formula that Jason X does, but everything horribly wrong and not funny whatsoever. This is what Jason X could have been if they decided to take it seriously and thought this was going to be a seriously good movie. This film, for me, gets a .5 out of 10, and this is by far one of the worst films I have seen in my entire existence of life right now. And yes, I am stating that I would rather watch Alien 3 all over Alien 4, but out of the entire Alien anthology, I would rather just skip 3 and 4 and watch Prometheus, Covenant, Alien, and Aliens, because the film series should have ended at Aliens, but if we have to have Alien 3, it should have ended at Alien 3. This film was a goddamn cash grab that needed to be made, and there's no logistical sense in this film that makes any sense. Cast aside, cast aside, you could have the greatest cast in the goddamn world. Every, you could have Oscar nominees, Oscar winners, you can have like people that you can have a cast that everyone adores. You can give them a bad story, bad dialogue, and just bad everything, and the movie can still be bad no matter how much you like the character. Take um, Sigourney Weaver, for instance. I like her as an actress, but I didn't like her in this movie. Ron Perlman, he's a bit of a weird egg. I don't hate him in some of his movies, but he was abnormally obnoxious and stupid in this movie. By Nona Ryder. This is him, beep. No pun intended. The guy, the guy who played the villain in Crow. Here's his name. Um, the probably the only reason why he got killed off so quick in the movie is because he saw that he got accepted for for his role in Crow and told the writers of this this movie, "Hey, kill me off quick so I can go make more money out of a better movie." <laughs> so this film gets a point five out of ten, and I am. I never want to see this movie ever again. I'm going to go over my 
trivia things because usually I try and do three of each category. For some reason, there was a shit ton of trivia and everything else was lacking more of. So I have 15 trivia things. Oh, more stuff for me to get angry at. Okay, so Sigourney Weaver did not want to do this movie. I bet she didn't. And you know you what? You can tell she didn't want to do this movie. If I could watch this movie and watch an actor half-ass it, you, I could tell she didn't want to do this movie. So The only person that looked like that wanted to do this movie and was having fucking fun was Ron Perlman because he would sign on to any goddamn project. <laughs> so, um, in, inter in an interview, they said, well, why did you do the movie? And she said, they literally sent a dump truck full of money to my house. They drove a dump truck full of money up to my house. I'm not made of stone. <laughs> would you like to know how much said dump truck was how much she got paid for this movie? Just tell me. Now, keep in mind, the bu overall budget for this move movie was $75 million. She was paid $11 million. Which is the entire budget <coughs> of Alien 1. Which, which is, here's the sad thing, though, because in, cause we watched the special edition of this film, which is nothing really fucking special about it. Um, there was an interview from the director, Jean-Paul Baptiste, or whatever the fuck his name is. He's like, oh, well, my vision was the theatrical version. I thought it was really good, but here's this one if you like it and whatnot and everything. Both versions fucking suck, brah. By the way, he was the, 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 like the third or fourth choice. They asked three or four different people to direct, and they all turned it down. The b-ball shot, after training for three weeks, took her another two weeks before she hit it. And then finally, they're like, okay, we're just going to have to move on. We're going to have to cut from one scene and just have some, something drop it down and make it look like you made it. And they're like, one more shot, and if you don't make it, you suck. Um, and then she shot it. She made it. And then Ron, Ron Perlman uh, broke character and smiled because he was like, finally. There's also a scene in the swimming scene when they're underwater. Number one, they had to fill that um, water area, which was a pool, with milk because it was too clear to be believable. What? They had to fill the pool with, with milk, like add it to the water. To make it look less clear. The glasses are off. <laughs> the glasses are off, you know what that means. I've given up. <laughs> Just imagine that French director <laughs> and a cheesy French This is a good movie! I thought it was good! I, I used skim milk. <laughs> Upon trying to go through the entrance where they do, Ron Perlman hit his head and knocked himself out and almost drowned and had to be saved by the, by one of the cameras. I actually heard these stories whenever I was looking up, like, uh, random alien facts just for, like, shits and giggles one day, and I heard that those two events happened. And I also heard he did his own stunts as well, as you said, while we were watching yes. it. So he had a bad time during this movie. <laughs> or a really good time, depending on your perspective. Uh, what was the robot's actress name again? My Nona Ryder. Okay, so she had an idea that she pitched that they decided not to go with. And I feel like this scene would have made you very angry. Do you remember the opening scene when there's a little mosquito bug and the dude smashes it and then... Oh, the scene that set the tone for the entire movie? Yes. So, the, 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 the idea that she had is to introduce the idea that Ripley had uh, acid blood was to have a mosquito land on her, suck some blood out, and then have the mosquito evaporate into smoke. That's literally setting the same tone as that guy. Also, Randall Ryder... Rhino Ryder. Rhino Ryder. Um, doing the swimming scene was the first time that she's been in a swimming pool since she was 12 years old when she had a uh, horrible, almost drowning accident. Good job traumatizing her! So for the first day that she went swimming, she had a panic attack and almost quit the, the movie. Like I said, Ron Perlman did his own stunts. Um, he accidentally realized that he cut the back of his knees after hanging off the ladder. <laughs> yeah, it's this infamous ladder scene that's probably the only part of the movie that I remember besides the ugly-ass thing that we're probably going to talk about later. We watched the special edition, but if you did not watch the special edition, in the theatrical version, they were talking about how the, uh, the Wayland Company got bought out by Walmart. They didn't say by Walmart in the original edition. They, they felt like in the special edition... The French director said they should be bought out by Walmart. 
the original script was actually Newt that was going to be cloned and not Ripley. I remember that, and I don't know how that would work, yet this also doesn't make sense either. They wrote a 60-page script story based just around that, and then, and then they're like, oh wait, we can just get Weaver to do it again, because they didn't think she was going to do it, and then they offered her more money than they should have, and then she's like, yeah, sure, I'll do it, you fucking idiots. Whenever the alien is sniffing on her, uh, Ripley. The, 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 the fucking ugly-ass hybrid? Yes, we'll say that. So she doesn't immediately make eye contact with said thing. Do you know why? She did a movie called Gorilla in the Mist, and she learned that if there's a dangerous animal, and if you don't look them in the, right in the eyes, they're less likely to attack you. Also, um, they were having trouble finding uh, a set to record on, because at the same time in Hollywood, most locations were taken up because the following movies were being made. Titanic, Starship Troopers, and Jurassic Park Lost World. <laughs> no wonder why they didn't make enough money. There's actually only two Holloways in this entire film, and everything else was, like, on made up. So, two rooms in this for this whole movie. Originally, before they decided to start messing with the ideas for it, they wanted to make this movie AVP. They never wanted to do any of this. They just wanted to branch off and do Alien vs. Predator. Okay, so here's here here's my thing. Here's my thing. Like thinking about that now, I feel like it would have made a little bit more sense if it wasn't humans doing it again 20 years later and if it was the predators doing it because they're like did some research, they wanted to test these things out for hunting abilities and whatnot. That kind of makes a little bit more sense than a random fucking Egyptian pyramid in the middle of goddamn nowhere and just sacrificing humans because, you know, that sounds like fun. The hybrid. Do you know how many people it took to operate that hybrid? More than it should. Eight. More than it should. It took eight people to operate that beautiful thing. I wish that if I have a kid someday, it will come out looking like that. I want to bash my brain. <laughs> Last trivia thing was this was the shortest of all of the Alien movies. So, now I have uh, two alternative uh, uh, versions that they came out with that I thought was worth noting. There is an Indian version that cut out 28 scenes of the movie. To, m to make it appropriate for television. Yeah, because culture and whatnot. ABC had a television cut out, uh, cut for this, and they cut out most of the violence from it. Oh, so they had a 20-minute movie. Yes. Probably both of those were a 20-minute 4TV episode. This movie was referenced in Resident Evil 1. Um, when was it referenced in, in Resident Evil 1? We just finished Resident Evil. In 2002. I know, but like, when was it referenced in the, film, in the movie? It didn't list. What? It didn't list. It just said it was referenced? Yeah. And also, this sequences from this film was used in the movie The History of Hands. Okay, that's all my random things. Now I can talk about the actual movie, what I liked, what I didn't This like. is where I'm either going to slightly hurt you or possibly murder you on the camera. I actually won't. <laughs> okay, so I'll start out with the things that I like about it. I liked the eggs. So in this one... And the director said said this in a thing that uh, he didn't like the original one because the eggs were not pulsing enough, and he made it more pulsing and nasty. Now, overall, in the film, he felt like they weren't nasty enough, so he really worked on this film to make it nasty. Everything in this film looked like it was lazily done and that it took no fucking effort. That's why everything in this film, to me, looks like a piece of shit. The eggs looked bad to you? Everything in this film looked bad. I thought, no, the eggs specifically. Do you think they looked bad? Everything looked fucking awful in this Specifically? Movie. Yes. The eggs look say, the eggs look bad? They looked better in the older movie. Do they look bad in this movie? Yes. I don't believe you. I probably have an entire fan base that would agree with me that everything in this movie looks fucking awful. A lot looks bad. Like, the whole nest thing, and that was all bad. But I think that the eggs in this one were the best in the series. The cast was phenomenal 
They had a lot of people. You also forgot to mention they had Tuco from Breaking Bad in it, too. I... The fight logic. When they're in the basketball hall, you know, the, the other dude's fucking around. He gets close to her, so she puts a basketball and hits him in the nuts. And the other guy immediately was like, I'm going to pick up this weight set and hit you in the face. It didn't make sense to me. I did like that they have an android in it again, and that was a good twist, because I was like, what, what's going on? Is she a clone, too? And I was like, oh, she's an android. One thing that I did not negate this for is... <laughs> Its pacing was really good. It was pro. It, it, it goes right up there. With, it's actually probably the best pacing. Because um, I never felt like it was dragging on, waiting for things to happen. Um, I don't know how long it took for something to start happening, but it felt like it was pretty quick. Maybe it was because Ripley's back, and you're like, wow, this is really fucking weird. Um, and it distracts you so much that it doesn't feel like it's dragging on. The movie actually ended, and I was like, wait, can't there be more? This is the end of the series, and we're ending it on this note. Some things I don't like is the whole cloning thing seemed fucking stupid. Um, containment logic was really bad. Um, so if you, your plan is to tame these animals, these creatures, and I get that. That's cool. And then you put one in a cage, and, and any time he does something bad, you press the button, it hurts. And then he goes, okay, I shouldn't do that. And then you're okay. You're fine. So, assuming that, you know that these things have acid. You had 200 years to study them. Um, you know their blood is acidic. It's been well documented in the past. So, you should probably build a room that's acid-proof. If you have such technology. Um, just to make it, you know. And if you don't, build a room on the bottom of the ship so they fall out into space. Instead of going and infecting and killing everyone. Then you decide to make 12 of them which is way more than you can handle. You should have done one for a while, maybe two, and call it good. And then they put 12 of them, and they put at least three of them in the same thing, not thinking, oh, well, he's just going to kill another one because they're fucking aggressive as shit. And then they just escape, and here we are. So I don't know at Walmart who was deciding this plan, <laughs> but Mike, do you have any comments on that logic? No, because the doctors in this film... So I'm very angry that Brad Dorf is in this movie as well. I did not like Ripley's acting in this film, and she was really cringy and feeling everyone's face, and like, oh, it doesn't matter. Like, it didn't make sense for Ripley. She still has Ripley's memory, so she should have acted like Ripley. And she did. The sexual cringiness of the doctor down in the thing, that creeped me out from when I was a baby, and it's creeping me out to this day. And my final thing that I don't like is the hybrid thing. That thing looks fucking who, who decided that? Why? When? How? I, I've spent enough time trying to talk about why this movie's bad or good or okay. This lands me at a solid five for this. Um, I felt like it's it, it's got some good points to it. It's got some really bad points to it. But if they cleaned it up a little bit, it'd be a good film. Um, and I feel like that's how the series has been overall for me, is overall, in the series, there's some good things, there's some good aspects to it, but they just, they don't tie it well together, and they get too distracted with sci-fi, and they do That's other what things happens that when you wrong. change the director and the producer per film, it goes in a different direction every time, and you don't get the same result. Exactly. Again, this is basically Jason X, but everything done wrong. It, and a better cast, but that's about it. This is about on the same level. as J It's still fucked, just like the Jason series. They didn't tie their stuff together well either. I mean, they did the same things they did in Jason X. They set the film like so many I years think, into the future so they wouldn't fu fuck with the timeline. I think Jason's a little worse. I mean, this is... this is Storytelling-wise, they're a little At the time, better. it was four movies versus ten, so... Yeah, but now they're at eight for their universe. So. Six, because I don't count the crossover. Anyways, so, everyone, that would be our review, unless you have something else you want to talk about on Alien 4. Nope. I'm glad I don't have to watch it ever again. Stay tuned for our Alien ranking list. <laughs>